Hello, this is Debbie with Light Up Your Worth. I am here today with one of my friends, Rochelle Marquez, and I am so just so blessed that I have so many uh, different types of friends and how they have gone through their whole journey. So I, you know, I always share how I've connected with my friends. And so Rochelle and I can actually connected with um, a Facebook group called Creative Healing Community with Johanna. Now, Johanna has been a guest here um, on the podcast. And so I just wanted to do a shout out because I want Johanna to also realize that there are relationships that are being built and people who are getting to know each other. And through this group, we, we actually realized that we live in the same um, community. So, which is really super cool to know that I have somebody here local who's one of my peeps. So without further ado, drum roll, huh? <laughs> I want to welcome my friend, Rochelle. <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Doing good. You know, what's yeah. so cute is that they, they can't, on the podcast, they can only uh, hear us, right? Versus uh, it, when it's out on YouTube. And I'm every time I look at Rochelle, I am smiling because she has this super beautiful, bright yellow ribbon. And it is like, it just brings you joy, right? Like just ha watching, yeah. just looking at you. I see this and I just, it brings out the sunshine. I end my email saying sending sunshine, by the way. And it just, it just reminds me of like, it, yellow is just such a beautiful, happy, joyful color. It is. Um, I love wearing bows in my hair. Uh, I don't think they should be only for the little girls in the world. Um, one of my favorite color shoes is yellow. Uh, for those that know Harry Potter, I'm a Hufflepuff. So it's like, well, it's not my favorite color. Actually, I don't have a favorite color, which is why I love Joh Johanna's work at, around color because I, I have a notebook that says my favorite color is the rainbow because it's really mood dependent. What my, like there's reds and blues. Like if I had to pick one and be a Cinderella blue because Cinderella has been my girl since I was little, but today is yellow. I mean, my shirt's multicolored for those that can't see it. But yellow is the color that I felt called to today. I just so. love it. I love it because you yeah. wouldn't have known that I said sunshine and it's sunshine. Yeah. Like you're carrying sunshine with you. I, I, just, yes. I just love that. <laughs> so I bring, I bring light to all that I do. You do. You do. I, I know you're, you're, you're so, you're so easy to talk to. Right. And um, we've been talking before we started to be, to record this and just catching up. And so I am really wanting to hear um, how you started out on this path with where you are now, right? From where I've met you to where we're neighbors and, yeah. <laughs> you know, and how that can happen. You know, I think people, as they, as they get online, right. And they're on, whether listening to this podcast or another podcast or uh, the communities that we've been part of, or they're part of my community, you know, it's, it's just, they need to know that you meet real people and real relationships can occur through these groups. And you can really meet um, so many incredible people like yourself. So um, I'm going to stop talking about me and I want to hear about you and your journey and how, you know, how did, how did you become who you are now with owning your worth and so I would say it probably started um, in 2012 or 13. I joined a network marketing company to supplement income. I had uh, the job I had got sold. I ended up getting a job with a very popular coffee company, but it's still to make ends meet. I wanted to try network marketing and um, I mean, flash forward. The best thing about like this whole uh, inner side note, the best thing about energy work and spirituality is you can make leaps and bounds in a short amount of time. And it really shows you that anything's possible. You could go the long route or you could, you know, the long route, or you could pull that string tight and, and just make this leap. So if we fast forward to 2018, I think it was right as I moved. 
um, one of the leaders from that networking network marketing company I was with um, posted something about a soul book healing she had had with um, somebody on Facebook and I needed to learn more. I had no idea what it was, no clue um, about what, what was a soul book or what the healing would entail. So I signed up. I bought, I bought a soul book healing, um, which is another word for Akashic records or, and, and just that deep um, energy healing. And it was pretty profound. So I joined their Facebook group. I joined their membership was brand new. Um, and that's actually how I got connected to Johanna was um, a meditation or a, a class she had sold uh, led within that membership. Um, and then just really being open to everything uh, that person ran an intro to intuition course which was a Kashuk records reading and then from there linked to one of her friends so another group um and she's the one i've been doing all my Kashuk record training through i've done business in the Kashuk records advanced Kashuk records um and i'm actually getting ready to do i didn't tell you about like a DNA reactivation course also where she's going to like realign and clear and do all. And it's, and then we have like six weeks of live class after, Ooh. which I'm not even sure what's going to happen, oh but because gosh. I've worked so much with this wonderful yes. person, like, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm in. I'm like, if you think, if you see me in the program, sign me up. <laughs> so right. you're one of her super yeah. fans. Ah, I love yeah, that. I love like, that. And um, the work's incredible. So like, leaps and bounds from where I was say summer of 18 to three years later and, and owning my gifts. And, you know, maybe I've more tiptoed out of the spiritual closet because of past stigmas or, you know, ancestral healing that's been happening or not. It's still, um, you know, my husband, I, I put my crystals out under the full moon and my husband and son call me a witch and it is what it is, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. I'm, yeah, if I'm a witch, then you better watch out, right? Like, <laughs> um, and just wanting to learn everything, but really needing to to see what I'm meant to bring and what can support me versus how I can support others. So yes, I put crystals out, but I don't know a lot about them. Or I understand the chakras, but I don't teach it. And I know the colors relate. And so if I wanted yellow today, it probably has to do with um, solar plexus, right? Or is it? Yeah, solar plexus is yellow. So that's the powerhouse. Like, so I, I get fuzzy on that stuff, but what I am good at is the energy healing and the records and connection to inner child and just doing it in a way that's relevant for the everyday person through like pop reference cultures, mostly Disney, but a lot of Harry Potter, Star Wars, Marvel, mostly Disney. Oh, that's so powerful. I love Star Wars too. There's you know and that's disney now all. so you know yeah. <laughs> marvel and star wars is now disney so now it's just like kind of disney and harry potter but yeah yeah, yeah. it is so funny is that how many people actually think about i know we were um, chatting about uh the movie soul and i had just seen it it was a reference and somebody said well it's really kind of more of an adult movie but it has it has adult references and it's a you know quotation child film and yet I was like I sat there and I was like almost speechless watching this movie and and when I start taking a look at some of the movies that I've seen there's so much reference to people if they're open willing to open mm -hmm. that part of their their mind and yeah. I mean even as I raised my son before I was really like you know plugged into the spiritual realm and we'd watch things like Pinocchio or, you know, I would use them as teaching lessons, you know, and he would go to one of my husband's friends while smoking and be like, if you keep smoking, you're going to turn into a donkey. Cause I mean, he took it literally, but at least, you know, until he learned smoking killed. And then that's what he would tell people at like, Hey, but he would, we would, what are the lessons? I would teach him the lessons in Disney even back then. And now I just do it to adults or whoever listening on Facebook yeah <laughs> and so and like you referenced so I spent a whole month talking about the lessons of soul oh so long ago so important so if I'm if I'm listening to the podcast and I've never heard of a soul record how mm -hmm. what would be a simple way to explain what that what it is so if they've never record, heard mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Akashic Record Soul Book is also known as the Book of Life, um, which they may have heard in the, there's a cartoon, non-Disney cartoon called the Book of Life, and of course in Coco, um, and it is your history is in. There's like a whole records. Um, the first time I ever visited, it was like a library and I pulled my own book off the library shelf. Now I just have my, like, it's very visual for me. Um, you know, my book is ready and open. I, I see it a lot. Um, if you've ever been to Disneyland and the Beast Library, it's a digital book where you can like stuff pops up, but um, that's how my brain interprets it. And, um, and it's, it's, it's your records. It's your soul's journey through lifetimes. Um, what's best now? And uh, if there's things that are keeping you stuck, you can find it there and move past it, heal it, rip it out of the book and burn it and watch that transmutation um, and, and then experience deep transformations. I usually cry when I'm the subject of being read in the records. Um, I have cried before getting messages for other people, but um, it, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, I've had um, help from like archangels and other guides and guardians up there to just help facilitate the healing. Yeah, I, I love the artistic records. The The work that I do also, I go into the art, I go into the records. And um, so I'm always curious about how we all interpret them, we all see them because it's all different for all of us. Yep. And, and where so much lifetime changes actually occur. And so, um, uh, so thank you for explaining that for people who are listening, who are, it's new for them. Um, I think it's important for people to be able to like, kind of connect that for themselves, right? Is they become more familiar because there's so many things to learn that like we've been chatting about. Like, I'm like, you might, we, well, you just went through the chakras, right? Like how often have I been talking, like been, learning about them but yet you know like I learned just a, maybe two years ago about the additional like the star chakra right like the earth chakra and I'm like what are those like I've never have heard about those right and so like it's there's so much there's so 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 much and so so how did you um you talked about how you joined the network marketing and then you you went down this path of just trying to understand yourself more and um. yeah um when the opportunities came up to say join the membership right it, it was like it didn't cost always matters but it was like I have to do this like I don't know why but I have to and then when I went in she had like a six-week course already in there and I just started learning meditation because I hadn't ever really been good at meditating anyways um and so I did that and like one thing led to another and just being open to possibility opened up more than I ever could have imagined three years ago um from not knowing what a soul book healing was to now doing them myself and, and on such a powerful level and um and and just just really just being open and listening to myself and and listening to the heart and what was it that I needed and being guided to that step is really that just following following intuition oh. <laughs> and just and and yeah taking the opportunity as it came not shutting the door on it Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I really love your reference to of uh, understanding, like when you spend time to understand that inner child, the, how it can impact your life, you know, right now. And right. so how, cause we, as I'm sure a lot of people have heard that, right? Like, oh, I need to go work on my inner child. But what does that mean when you're working with somebody? What does that look like? Or what does that feel like or sound or smell? Or <laughs> <laughs> so it's it, obviously it's different for every person, but in a sense, our inner child is who we are as children. So whatever we experienced, um, we bring with us into adulthood and that's that inner child, whether it's um, what they call small T trauma, like, you know, being told you're ugly or not good enough or this or that, or big T trauma where you're abused or this or that, no matter what kind it is, we bring it with us. And until we forgive ourselves for not doing more, um, go back and give that child a hug, whatever it is um, that the person needs, 
we carry it with us like a ton of bricks and it's very hard to move forward. Um, it shows up in ways like uh, still not feeling good enough to do a certain job, um, really a, a lack of joy in life, um, wanting to be more adult, I think. For me, that's where it shows up. Like, um, I think if more of us had fun, like a child who's been uninhibited, who hasn't been told no, not be told no, but not be told what's not reasonable, like that imagination and that curiosity, if we can reconnect to that part of our inner child, that can bring us to um, just a life where we're chasing our dreams. You know, I, I know I was told at like 10 that my my dream job was unre unreasonable, right? We tell kids to be realistic, grow up, behave, and, and their joy starts to dim. You can see how their face changes or how they don't play with abandon anymore because and we do it unintentionally, but we're conditioning them to live inside of a box and to think inside of a box versus that just crazy imagination they're innately born with. Oh, wow. Isn't that the truth? And, and don't you see it too with like adults who are like just being joyful, having real simple fun we we put so much expectations on ourselves like we put so much pressure on ourselves to be this proper <laughs> proper um perfect right like this perfect person so i have a question for you when was the last time you splashed in puddles like there's nothing that's like Okay, granted, sometimes here it can be cold when it's raining, but the next time there's a summer storm, go splash in the puddle. Get all wet. Like it's when we first moved to this neighborhood, my son and we met a neighbor, and at the time the little boy was two. They played in the water in the gutter and they had so much fun just splashing in a puddle. Oh. And it's still one of my favorite things to run in, in the summer rains to run mm -hmm. and jump in puddles. It really, it, it's so funny that you it's mentioned It's so that, simple, right? Right, it is so simple. You know, at the beginning of this year, I um, I love Post-its, right? So I create things with Post-its. I make notes with Post-its, you know, I'm a Post-it person. An idea goes on Post-it and I am all over the place. So at the beginning of this year, I sat down at the beginning of the year and I started setting out my intentions. Like, what are some of the things I want to go do? And you know, it was so many things on my list once. I actually created a whole big uh, sheet with post-its on fun things to go do, like kid things, like I haven't played on a playground. Like I love the swings, right? You want to, I, I carry a Frisbee with me because it doesn't have to, you know, like, I had noticed over the last year, I'd become so serious. And so, oh, I just, you know, like to be able to bring out that less serious part of ourselves, we're still mature adults, but some of those needs were just, we had to grow up when we were we still did. children. Some of us, we had, we, we had to grow up to survive, right? They are survival mechanisms. Yeah. So if we go through and we, and we heal some of them and remind ourselves that we're safe now, we're in charge, we're safe. You're safe to be who you are. You're safe to, to dream big again. Like that, that dream I had was to be a marine biologist and study humpback whales. And okay, that wasn't meant to be. And I get that now, but you know, when you're told as a 10 year old that your dream's no good, that really shuts down any dream. That means none of it's going to be good enough really. And but now, like, one of my bucket list trips is you can go to Tonga on the other side of the world and swim with humpback whales in the wild, which is really all it really came down to. When I really look at what I wanted to do as a 10-year-old, that's what it is. And guess what? It's still a possibility now. So to reconnect with those, what is it you wanted as a kid? And how can you do that again as an adult? Or how can, how can you translate? How can you bring more of that into your life so you're living with more joy, more happiness, connected to really who you are because who you are as a kid was so pure so how do you get back there yeah. while still living while still balancing all the adult life things yeah so you're able then to when if you're working with people to bring that part of themselves back out right or reconnect with that person because mm -hmm. maybe they're fragmented inside their records yeah their, so their we records and 
I have a four week program that's in alignment with your inner child and we go through a, a cleansing and we use the new moon and the full moon to release old patterns and set new intentions and it's mm -hmm. all combined. It's part of my six month and 12 week program, but it also, is, I do have a standalone, but because like I said, like, I mean, I love going to Disneyland. There's nothing, I'm probably the biggest kid there and, and nothing, I, well, there is stuff that brings me, it, but brought me more joy with seeing how much fun my son has in there, right? Or, mm -hmm. and, and just, I see the magic that's there. Not everybody does, but there's there's just magic there. And, and that's part of what I do is bringing that magic that you find in those simple joys into your everyday life. And how great would life be if you're living you don't have, being a millionaire is not living a magical life. The magical life is enjoying every day. Oh, amen. That is just so powerful. I think that was why that movie uh, uh, impacted me so much. And uh, the soul movie, right, that I had just mm -hmm. seen recently. Um, when you said that, I mean, you're just, and I know we're, you're using Disney as an example, but but I hadn't been to Disney in a long time. And I went there for my I don't know, I think it was my 40th birthday or I had um, got some girlfriends together, my sister and grown up niece and we went, right? And I had fun. And one of the favorite places that every time I go there, now that I've been back a couple of times was the Tiki Room. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite. I have a Tiki Room dress. Oh, I love it so much. I love the Tiki Room and it's been around. It's like one of the few originals still there um, right and so yeah it was built in the 60s so not quite an original but it was walt's the last project walt disney saw to completion before he passed really in the parks yeah oh. yeah he uh pirates of the caribbean was still being built when he passed but mm -hmm. tiki room he did see finished and i love i mean i love the tiki room for the shot it's so corny and i love it I love grabbing a Dole Whip and, and singing along with all the birds and I sing loud and I dance and embarrass my kid, but I go to the Tiki Room at least once a trip. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that room because I love like the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Haunted House. I love some of those other classics that are still there, but that room I'm sitting there, I can remember being there as a young child and this is back in the 70s where going to Disneyland was years of my parents' savings to take us there. And so that uh, trip is so powerful in my mind, that moment of joy. And it's actually is then connecting, thinking about your work, right? Connecting with that inner child of how much I loved it. Like, like that, um, what's the word, you know, like, when you're really present on where you were and as children, we're so present. Yeah. Yeah. We just take things as they are. We don't make assumptions. It is. And we just enjoy. Oh, I, I love that. I love how you're talking about bringing in the moon energy, you know, um, Beth mm -hmm. was on and talking about moon energy and I'm out now too with my crystals out with full moons and my water. I don't do it. I don't, and I don't do it every, yeah, the water. I don't do those every cycle because I, I, there's just so much going on, but there'll be times it's, and I, I'll, maybe not in this group weird to say, but like the crystals will say, Hey, it's time to, time to clean us. And it's like, okay, round everybody up, including all the jewelry. Don't forget your jewelry that has stones in it. Um, and then put them out. Yeah. So I do about every two to three months is when I do mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't bring them out every time. I mean, I brought, might bring a few out too, but it's just so, I, I, I love how you are mixing, you know, stuff that people can relate to, the life coaching, <laughs> the inner child, and pulling it all together. Like how powerful is that with, you know, how, and what a difference you know, has it made in your life to be able to step into who you are? Right. And I, and I also like my clients don't have to know the why necessarily, like, why are we like, okay, we're doing it that the, the full moon or the new moon, but this is what you traditionally do, but they don't have to necessarily buy in a hundred percent. If they believe what they're writing down, I release, you know, whatever it is, uh, feelings of unworthiness, uh, not being enough. I mean, as women, we carry around that 
a lot like that's constantly having to be re-cleared out you know because as you level up and as you grow a different version of it can come up um but as long as you're just open to possibility then you can do anything that I offer and it doesn't have to matter if you understand the moon cycles and how it affects us or doesn't but I will say as women and I haven't listened to that moon one yet but um you know there's women have 13 cycles the moon does 13 cycles in a year like we are meant to flow with the moon that much I know I don't know a lot about lunar energy but I know we're divinely connected to that as well mm -hmm. yeah that's one of the things I've been learning this year too and um I set out with um launching the membership around the moon cycles and Beth is showing me more about that and being in the feminine energy of, mm -hmm. you know, instead of go, 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 like, yeah, there are go, 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 go. So do, I do go a lot. Like I'm a high <laughs> execute <laughs> achiever, you know, that's in me. But, um, but then realizing that there are some weeks where I'm feeling a little bit more tired and that's just actually natural cycles. And in just simply honoring that, I get actually more done. It's, yeah, the more you rest, the more you accomplish. <laughs> yeah, right. Like we, I think we're all been taught to go, 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 masculine energy, but there's a balance of the feminine and the, um, the masculine. And I, I've noticed it's. I'm hearing. I, I don't know if it's just because of who I'm talking to, but everybody is realizing this in at least in the spiritual type of communities about the much more than it was like five years ago. I don't know if that's my own maturity with where I am or my own healing, but it, it doesn't sound so woo to me, understanding feminine and masculine energy, you know, like get shit done versus, um, you know, it's receiving. Some of that, some of that's your brain and how our brain works on autopilot, like where you're, uh, where your focus goes, energy flows. So as you focus more on your spirituality, your brain will naturally search out things that support what you're looking at currently. Um, but also some of it is, you know, they say we're in a high ascension right now and that balance is coming and it's the rise of the feminine. And um, there was the whatever the most recent, oh, my calendar doesn't show it. It must've been at the end of last year, Friday the 13th was, I read an article about how 13 is really a power number for women. And that's, 13 moon cycles women have 13 period cycles in a year and really the 13 being a bad number was again another way of um suppressing women back in the day with witch trials and things like that oh wow i did not know that oh i just love i just love learning and, and there's just so <laughs> and that was just some random so much, email I got. right i can't yeah. even tell you who i got the email from i'm like oh no, we should really be embracing this number 13 especially as women I'm like, okay, I could get behind that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is so, so powerful. I, you know, that's really part of why when it, why I am creating this community, right? Is that there's so much, there's so many people to connect to where we all learn from each other because <laughs> we all have different little like sweet spots, you know, little right. areas that are, that we call or what we start, where we start and where we evolve to and what feels better and this the curiosity yeah. of wanting you know to learn more and so now so how could somebody who's interested in learning more about you know their inner child or the different type of work that you do um you want to share a little bit more about that and what does that look like? um well like like where to find me or what the work looks like what is the work how about the work um so for the inner child work um I need, well, obviously we have to look at the calendar with the moon cycles and see what that, and then I do some pre-work in the Akashic record, setting intention, um, working uh, with a, it's a spherical ball of energy that's rainbow colors. So it's all the colors because, and then um, planting, basically I plant that. And when it's ready, based on the cycles again, um, we start the work and we go into the Akashic records and we do clearing and say affirmations for each of, um, basically we're going to align your chakras to your inner child and clear them, move out that old energy. Um, I ask them to pay attention to what comes up as we go through some of these affirmations for the different chakras. 
and then um, align that. And then, you know, we do the, the letting go and the setting intentions. And then there's a week of coaching around whatever else comes up or whatever else that person may need. Oh, how wonderful so. is that? That's a lot of goodness there rolled into to mm-hmm. that. I love that. Yeah. And then if, uh, then if they need more coaching after that, they can uh, get the program or just schedule as needed and mm-hmm. go from there. But yeah, but um, yeah, it's wow. pretty powerful. <laughs> wow. You know, I wanted to, um, we had chatted too, and I wanted to uh, bring it back because I thought it was really powerful about the Disney, the one Disney character that we've been talking about and with the girl. Um the Mohana. Moana. Moana. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I wanted to kind of plug that because I want, I was just, uh, it was just, it's just such a relevant uh, like example of how our spiritual stuff is really, is really connected into so much stuff of what we're doing. And you're, you were even saying like how she says like, I am and and um I wanted to so see so in the, her mm-hmm. her journey is um is uh I, I think very identifiable probably for women especially um she starts out and she's singing about where she wants to go what her responsibilities are and basically says why she isn't good enough like what is wrong with me because I want to be out on the ocean where my father says I can't go. I, what is wrong that I can't like this life? I mean, she goes into semantics about not being a princess, but she's the chieftain's daughter. So she is the next in line. And why can't she be satisfied with that? What is wrong with her? Because the call is to be out on the ocean, not to be stuck on land. Um, and then and to save her people, she, you know, crosses the ocean she does what she needs to do and she is about to give up um and she gets a visit from her spirit grandmother and her grandma asks her who she is and that song is just still so it's like a minute long but it's so powerful because she goes who am I and then um she realizes who she is and it's a person who loves her people and would do anything for them and then she realizes that the call's not out, that it's not the ocean calling her, it's the inside that's calling her to the ocean. And then she says, and the song says, that it's always rising and falling like the tide. So she realizes the call co- doesn't come and go, but it's stronger at other points than it isn't. And she knows from there what she must do. She knows she can trust her inside voice and her intuition um, to finish the task at hand. And, and it even continues into the next song she sings at the end when she finishes it. She um, talks to Taka and tells Taka that, which is this fire God, that this isn't who you are. You know who you are. Like take a moment to breathe. And then they, they um, would, wouldn't nervously be noticed by most people as they actually like touch third eyes, which I used to do with my cat a lot. Um, and it's like they communicate spiritually forehead to forehead um and it's to me it's really powerful and then Taka realizes that she doesn't need to be this angry fire god and she can go back to being Tafiti because that's who she's supposed to be it's 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 I just love the end of Moana I love the whole movie <laughs> and just the whole Polynesian aspect and all that as well but really it's connecting to who you are and and following that call inside mm-hmm. And then and it, and what happens is she changes the habits of her people in the end and they all go back to the ocean again to be the wayfinders that they're meant to be. So by following her destiny and listening to the call, she changes the course of her people for the better. Isn't that powerful? I, you know, it's so powerful in so many different aspects about why people start down or why they end up on this spiritual path or whatever they get are drawn to learn about and how it really is so much of it is all around us and then once you mm-hmm. open your eyes and you can start connecting there's we're everywhere like uh, we we are at disney we are at your <laughs> movie theaters right <laughs> we're yeah. at costco I, mean- I think is what alora said we're at costco <laughs> <laughs> And how it's just so prevalent about all of us just being 
who we are meant to be. Yeah. I mean, and really most Disney movies are like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, Brave is another one that's like Merida follows the will of the wisps and it deals with fate and is the fate within us. Can we change it? What is it? Um, you know, in Soul, we talk about that. He's, he's living for that big dream. And then when that big dream happens, he's disappointed because he didn't really live. He just had that end goal in mind and he didn't live his life. Mm -hmm. So we never know if he goes back to performing on stage, right? Like we don't know, but we know he's going to live every day to the best that he can and take those moments, the pizza, the, the, you know, how good does that pizza taste? Like that is a moment. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to a podcast recently and they say joy for them, like that cup of coffee, just holding it in their hands and smelling it. It's just a way to start the day and just breathing gratitude for how wonderful it is. And that starts your day. Yeah. You know what I loved about soul was I love the pizza scene too, right? Where he's eating the pizza. I really love when he has to go to his mother after um, he rips the pants, right? And <laughs> he goes and he's been afraid to tell her. And then when he actually shows up for himself, because of the other per person, you know, but, right. but, you know, but he but shows up. up and says his wishes. She responds accordingly. And it's like, well, then wear this instead. If you're going to do it, let's do it right. Be who you're like, if that's what you want. Let's go for it then. Right. I just got chills. Like, oh my gosh, the goosebumps, because isn't that like uh, what you're doing now? You're stepping up so that you, you like, you you're stepping into who you are. And saying, yeah, I put things out in the moon and I, I, um, I spent this time and I help you go into your records and, and retrieve and heal and clear and, and I, you're going to bring more joy for mm -hmm. people to find their joy again in the simple things of life. And it's not this big, you know, you just won the lottery moment. It's the, it is the everyday living. And I love how it's so practical. It is so practical. Yeah. You're, you're taking some real life things and making it very practical for somebody to intertwine this part of themselves. So thank you so much and, um, for doing that and shining your light, right? Uh, and then wearing your light today, you know, so that it is like completely aligned in. I just think it's, I, I think it's so powerful of watching you know, and, and, and just a short, short I quotations, right. And how just a few years where you've gone through your own journey and then how you are now lifting up others to find their own joy. And it's so powerful. Well, and I think it also shows the power of working in the records and doing energy work that you can make quantum leaps that would normally take multiple years, right? Mm -hmm. Like, quantum leaps of healing of, of finding joy of connecting within things you could because we are so easily distracted now take decades to learn I mean what what's the one thing people regret most on their deathbed they say it wasn't working more it's time and happiness and not doing the things they enjoyed right oh I get that so how how do we how do we not make it there at the end how do we do get it now and have that joy and 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 as a mom um and I do work I can I'll work with anybody um women especially but moms because we want everything for our kids and we do so much but they learn by example so if we're not lit up inside they actually learn that they have to have that job and it does that it that maybe dreams don't exist. They, they learn, we put other people first to put other people first. Like they are learning by our example. So if we don't go after our dreams, if we don't find that joy, if we don't, if we don't play with them, uh, they're going to learn to be the same. And, and I know most moms don't want the same for their kids. They want better. Mm -hmm. So we have to do better. So they'll do better. Yeah. Yeah. And I love when you're in the records because you can do so much generational healing so that they don't, you know, have those same things that we've been carrying around in our DNA for generations and generations. Oh my gosh. I know. And just how I had a healing done last week. Woof. <laughs> I cried a lot of tears. Um, it was a lot about the pressure I put on myself. And it went back to like 
there was some generational stuff that she really like she said three years old and like you know, stuff came up and I was just like oh my it just it was crazy and um my to-do list is just as long as it was a week ago but I don't feel as much pressure as I have to have it done right now mm. but I'm letting letting go of right now and just everything in perfect timing is what I keep telling myself mm -hmm. I love that. That's a message I think so many moms need to hear, you know, because we're always going to have the list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And even if you cross things off, more stuff gets added, right? Right. Yeah. Or, or quarantine happens and now you're sharing a space and, or who knows. <laughs> mm -hmm. And isn't it a joy that we actually get to spend more time together and slow down and Part of me wants there to be, a, I don't want another lockdown. Like I don't because the time it would take to, to move on from that. It was really nice being forced to stay home. <laughs> I have to say, you got know, my hands dirty in the dirt. I uh -huh. spent more time playing Monopoly and just not doing, not go, go, go. Yeah. You know, I remember, and I keep aging myself, right? Growing up in the seventies, but <laughs> And I remember us being busy, but I don't remember us being at the level of busy now, what was expected of my parents. Um, you know, we did go do things. We did go camping. We did go, I mean, camping, we had tents. We slept on the ground. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how do I go glamping? <laughs> Me too. Right? Like, and that was just like perfectly normal. But I think is, especially in the U.S., I think our, we've, there's so many expectations of even how to go camping, right? Like what you have to. So have. how do we break free of those expectations? And that's part of what I do. Yeah. Oh. Is living life on your terms because you're connecting within. You're not mm -hmm. being defined by your neighbor, society, whatever. You're really figuring out what it is you want deep inside and following it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I absolutely love that. Um, I could have used that help, you know, and when I was in child rearing season of my life, you know, I had those super high expectations of, you know, I can honestly remember um, having, I, I think my son was about nine, having a birthday party, we had a pool, so people were pretty much going to be outside. Cake was, you know, I'd gotten the cake together, and I was, I remember that week at coming home from work, and cleaning my my baseboards upstairs in our bedroom, my master bedroom. And I remember um, my son's dad, like I just started like, I just had a meltdown, right? Like you're not helping enough. And then he's like, who cares about our baseboards? I'm like, they're gonna be looking at them when they go in to use the bathroom or change. And he's like, really, you think that they're going to do that? And I'm like, they will. And I didn't finish. Nobody cared about my baseboards. We were all outside in the sun playing, you know, and I remember being so upset because he wasn't helping, right? And then having the meltdown and then realizing like, I just can't do it all. But what was really powerful about it is it actually started to have me switch from the generationalness of the house has to be spotless and letting go and just being present. And that was actually a really fun birthday party. Right. And being present. And my son remembers this birthday party. I don't think he even knew that mom had a meltdown about the baseboards, <laughs> right? And why do well, I remember I mean, that, right? Like, cause don't we do that crazy stuff? You can see this and I'm not intentionally hiding it behind my chair, but if I wanted to, I could have probably cleaned this up this morning and not had his pile of everything. but. Right now, life is messy. It's still messy from COVID, even as we're reopening. And it's been a messy year, but hey, we've all survived it. So uh, let's learn the lessons, right? The message and the messiness mm -hmm. of this last year or year and a half by the time school's over and mm -hmm. and, and move forward. Well, and I think and create, no, and we have this, we, uh, sorry, I had to be interrupted. I was no, gonna no, say, no. We have this chance to create our new normal. Like we don't have to go back to what we had before. We don't have to go back to overscheduled we can, we have the opportunity to be still, you know, I know we say our kids missed out on a lot, but if they got more of us, maybe not. Um, and I, and I get some people had to work through the whole pandemic and some more than, and than others. Um, 
but if we can't teach our kids to be still, if we can't be still in the quiet moments, what are we scared of? And, and how can we teach our kids? Like those quiet moments are where we process emotions and, and without reaching for the phone, like 10 minutes of just being with yourself. You need to be comfortable with yourself to be comfortable with anybody else. So if that's a gift COVID gave us, and if it's not, then let's work together and, <laughs> and get to that point because we weren't that family that was overscheduled. My son took quarantine like a champ as an introvert and a gamer. He talked to his friends all the time because he was playing games. Uh, we weren't in sports, so he wasn't missing anything. Um, so it was easier for us than some of the families. But I've seen families where kids double up on sports and it's it exhausts me seeing the schedule. And it's like, where can we where can we make a shift and have more time? Like where can you find more time as a family? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, especially moms, right? Because aren't we the ones who are in charge of in most families? Mm -hmm. I think we're the ones in charge of the calendar. Right. The this is where boundaries come in. The yeah. word nobody likes. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things, one of the things on my massive to-do list is to create um, a course on boundaries, but making it fun because boundaries does have such a negative stigma. But um yeah, when we have boundaries, we can live free. It, it's it sounds counterintuitive, like you put a box around what I can, what I allow in, but it's really it's a freedom thing. Because mm -hmm. then it's easy to say no to something. Nope, doesn't work for us. Thanks, bye. You know, I totally see that because you know, I I I also in my you know the business side of me is I do strategic planning, and I do cascading metrics. So when you actually understand what are the five most important things in your family life, it's just your strategy of your life. And it rolls down to some type of metric. Everything mm -hmm. is, you know, and if you know what this is the direction you're going for, you know, like we're going to spend more family time together. Oh, and now we're all in lockdown. Wow. Look, mm -hmm. I actually get to spend, <laughs> maybe I went from one extreme to the other, but it, it could be yeah. something so simple. And then now that it all fills back up, it's like, well, how can we kind of, maybe we don't need to spend a hundred hours this week together. But what if we spent more than 10? Those two right. hours. And, and before was mm -hmm. and before were we even spending 10? Not counting car rides to and from anything. Mm -hmm. Dinner together. Like, and maybe people call that old fashioned, and and I do call myself old fashioned, but I to me, COVID gave me the gift of time. Um and just and again being open, I got incredible experiences. Like I, I now I, I now crew on a hot air balloon. Like that is something I don't even know to begin how to find out how to do. But because of COVID, you know, our balloon races were canceled. Somebody landed a block from our house and we got to know them and now we crew for them. Like being open and, and literally took us, you know, looking outside to see a hot air balloon land versus, you know, binging Netflix opened up this huge, really cool hobby right like right i grew oh, on a gosh. hot air balloon like that is the the craziest thing that i never in a million years would have dreamed of doing riding in one yes and it's amazing let me tell you that's like no words to describe how peaceful and amazing it is but yeah it's the coolest oh. so i so it, but if you if your schedule's filled how can you let something so fun come in mm -hmm. Oh, yes, the intentions of designing. Everybody can now, like, you have a fresh start. Yeah, so we have a fresh blank of paper. Yeah. Yeah, you, you have it. Even though I know there was people who worked, you know, even more hours than normal right. and, all, you know, we're very grateful for them. But for a large percentage of people, that was not them. They were home. Right. Um, so that is, that is just super beautiful. So, But hey, even for them, for anyone any day is a fresh start. It really truly is. Mm -hmm. When we choose, when we decide that we want something different out of life, that's our fresh start. And we didn't need COVID to teach us that, but a lot of people were forced to look at it differently, I think. Yeah, completely agree. I mean, this, you know, podcast was just born in February and we're in uh, April 
now mid-April. And so this will probably be published in early May, but it's, you know, setting that intention of providing this outlet for people and being able to showcase and um, so important. That was my, that's my intention, right? To build that community for people, for these conversations to happen, that fresh start, the, to take a look at something new that you haven't experienced is, is definitely part of this whole intention. So I am so grateful for our time together and the joy that you are bringing, like just with our talking, you know, like it's this really beautiful, calm, um, a, a, a real joy, like this calm, I know who I am, I am, I am me, you know, like it's, and it's beautiful. It's not, it's, um, somebody's going to have to meet you or maybe they'll feel it through listening to this or seeing this, right? But yeah. it's this presence, like your presence. That's the gift is being present. And you've um, honored me with that present today. So thank you so, so much. This has been wonderful. Um, how would people who want more of this, how can they reach you? Um, I have a website, confidentdreaming.com. But I also go live every Monday on Facebook, pretty much every Monday, um, unless I'm on vacation, I go live on Facebook for a magical Monday message um, because Mondays have a bad rap. And I mean, I was a huge fan of Garfield growing up and his tagline is I hate Mondays, but um, <laughs> so many people have adopted that as well. Um, you know, Mondays are the beginning of a traditional work week and this, and I think Monday is just another day. If we can live, you know, I just, somebody I follow on social media said, live every day like it's Saturday. Live every day like it's full of possibility of what you would do on the weekend. And then your workday may not be so bad. So I try to bring a magical Monday message in every Monday. So I go live every Monday morning-ish, usually around 7.30 Pacific. Um, but they're all on my Facebook page. And then, um, you know, I follow it up with a blog post that gets linked in my weekly newsletter that comes out on Fridays. But if you go to my website, there'll be a sign up there. So if you go confident dream dreaming.com slash resources. I have a few free resources there. Two of them are very Disney based, like one's five ways to have the best day, the Disney way. And oh. then um, one is remember who you are and it's 10 tips. And if anybody's a Lion King fan, remember who you are is a big one when Simba sees his dad in the stars um, and he goes, Simba, remember who you are. And he's meant to be king. So it again, is about connecting inside and, and fulfilling your destiny. Um, so that one's 10 tips about how to reconnect with who you really are, but based on Disney movies. And then there's like a life satisfaction quiz and just some pretty quotes you could get. So all of those are um, on the, the free resources page. Oh, I love that. Oh, I want to go. I have. I need to go look <laughs> at that, right? Because that was such a beautiful scene in Simba. So I know I could take us, we could start talking again for another hour. Oh, man, the lessons think, right? in the Lion King I, are huge. Oh my <laughs> yeah. goodness, right? Like, don't get us started there. But thank you so, so much for being here. And thank um, you for having me. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, so thanks. Mm -hmm.